Hello everybody, today we are going to paint horses in watercolor and I will go over all the details that you need to know. This is a full tutorial. So as you can see, I have the drawing already roughly sketched and now next step is basically watering the paper. So I'm using a spray bottle <clears throat> and just spraying everywhere and the next will be just wet on wet applying some light to medium value of yellow and I pick yellow because it is a really nice scene of uh, horses in sunset setting so I thought yellow will look really really nice so as you can see all the brush strokes are wild very loose I'm using a big flat brush and just throwing paint around uh, around the horses in the negative space and don't worry if it uh, just crosses some of the lines and goes inside the horses the main thing about watercolor is edges so a lot of edges can just disappear and this is step one starting with the light to medium value and now I'm introducing another color this one is blue I believe it's uh, either cyan or phthalo phthalo blue is very intense so most likely cyan so just throwing it everywhere again the paper is very wet I'm using some just paper towel to wipe some areas and create interesting effects So just going over some of the edges, some edges could be sharper, some could be softer. Also I'm throwing some clean water to create interesting effects of nice blooms everywhere. And we're still applying the very light, the light value and really making sure that it's all very expressive done in a very expressive way. Rewatering the paper. If uh, paper seems to dry, I just throw some more water. Now I will be painting the shadow in the horses and they're pretty much uh, placed against the light so there will be really nice dark silhouettes and I'm using some dry brush technique again look at the big big shapes uh, don't worry about details so much and I'm still using my large brush brushes this one is around with a point but before that I was just using the big flat so continue applying a really dark color. This one is indigo mixed with some most likely quinacridone magenta and just see it all as one big silhouette. Don't worry about filling in. We are just covering this whole area as one big shape in the shadow. And I try to have different brush strokes going in all different directions. wet on wet could be dry brush wet on wet just variety as long as we have variety of brush strokes we are on on a good track uh, i'm introducing some cool tones usually shadows are cooler so definitely mixing again indigo some blues and again having some sharper edges some edges could be softer disappearing there is more blues uh, spraying some clean water creating very, very interesting effects let paint drip really this should be a very expressive painting we're trying to create emotion to and some feeling in our work
and painting very loosely in a more impressionistic style. So don't worry about the details yet. Here I'm going to just wipe with my paper towel some of the light that's at the bottom of their neck and heads and slowly introducing warm tones. So these warm tones are the light. Light is very warm especially if outside in a really warm day the light will be warm. So I'm using orange and yellow. So now I'm mixing a really really dark tone and um, applying yet very freely again to paint the mane in a dry brush with a dry brush technique kind of creating an interesting texture very nice lines and I have my technique of called I call it jokingly create and destroy where I just apply a brush strokes and then take off part of it so it does create an interesting rhythm in your painting so again building a little bit more depth into our painting and it introducing some higher contrast area obviously the horse that is <clears throat> closer to us will be higher contrast and I'm using my darkest in those areas more crazy brush strokes on that mane and really you can just go as free and expressive as you want and unifying some of these lines because we don't want to have too many ones just some could be disappearing some could be appearing so again emphasizing the contrast now moving to the horse that's behind that one basically painting the shadow again and going into some more detail uh, introducing some warmer tones not everything in the shadow is really warm so uh, this is a mix between uh, quinacridone or lizard uh, crimson any type of cooler reds with the uh, indigo color will get you a beautiful uh, purple tones that are very um, appropriate for shadows So we're still not going into too much detail, we just want to see the big picture first. And I'm using all kinds of interesting brush strokes, trying to create a nice loose painting. Uh, that fence behind should not be too overwhelming, so I'm trying to soften some of these edges by using my dry brush and throwing some water around. And wiping with paper towel. Continuing painting that background and also the silhouette of the second horse and as you can see I'm applying a brush strokes and then I'm taking parts away so this is the whole essence of the create and destroy that I'm using and again some parts of that those edges are being softened Now with a finer brush, smaller brush with long hair, I'm adding some more details. 
and again try to be very very expressive this is dry brush technique looking mainly the direction of this hair not as much as the individual hair but see it as a as a big shape in what direction does it go so then you can really be very very expressive with your lines yeah, and the, the hair and the brush strokes can be really going in all kinds of directions don't be too literal with your reference you can exaggerate some areas and be more playful and there's hair flowing everywhere i really wanted to create a nice intimate moment of these two horses in the sunset just create a nice mood of stillness yet movement and the movement is uh, emphasized by these brush strokes and the dark color that I'm now using just adding more depth this is obviously the second layer and really making stronger contrast more indigo using more indigo and darker colors yes it's really really important to pay attention to the values so you want to have a wide range of values i have very dark right now and just compare it to the very light which is the paper pretty much the white of the paper it creates a really nice wide range of values and creates a very strong painting with high contrast so again i'm using either a rigor brush or uh, the fat liner you can create some really nice lines and getting into some more details into that main continuing with the hair or the main brother now adding some accents and i'm trying to really keep a limited palette in my painting so in this case i'm gonna keep it yellow orange and blue and really having the blue as predominant color everywhere and using the warm tones only as highlights for the area where the sun is hitting the horses So I really like that mane and the movement. So I really wanted to make sure that I'm paying attention to it and create, uh, have a lot of fun with, with it. Now moving on to some more detail. Again, using the darker value, we're starting to define all the shapes in the face. The horse. definitely anything that's closer to the light it's gonna get warmer so this is the cast shadow that the mane is casting onto the horse I will be mixing uh, warmer tones 
continuing with building and creating more shapes and horses as we know have really very unique shapes in their faces so pay attention to 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 have it all correctly done there's a lot of subtlety some edges are softer some are harder and that's what's going to make our painting believable if, if, even if we paint loosely and expressively still paying attention to these subtle changes in the edges is going to make it look really realistic anything that's closer is usually high contrast warmer so that horse will have those qualities Now using a warmer tone, I'm just mixing reds and a little bit of uh, indigo to make it a darker value, just adding the second layer. And looking again at the big shapes, that area specifically in the horse is quite large. Again, very important, pay attention to all the edges. And you don't want to have more than four inches of a brush strokes that's exactly the same. I try to break it up and again, bringing up that my infamous create and destroy approach. going into the nostrils and that is a very dark area and uh, interesting shapes again and softening some of those edges by using clean water Don't try to control your watercolors too much. Let it flow. Everything is sometimes could be just spatter. The paint could be spattering, could be flowing, could be dripping, and that is okay. It does add some more movement and really personality to your painting. So obviously this area is a bit cooler around the, the nose of the horses and I'm adding those cool tones. There's lots of texture in that area too. There's That's where the whiskers are, so that will be added later. And again, I like some harder edges in watercolor. Not everything should be soft and really smooth. Having some harder edges is, is okay. I think it adds some more drama. Just study your reference, look at really every single shape, look at it as a plane in a three-dimensional space. There's a lot going on and it's all about edges and values. Continuing now with the horse behind, uh, we'll be using cooler tones because it's behind the horse that's closer to us. So I'd like to have it receding, not taking too much, uh, not drawing the attention too much to it. That should be secondary. So again, using the brush strokes in all kinds of way, in any direction, use a paper towel if you have to, uh, wipe some edges, and right now we are building now the details, pretty much, using a darker value of blues.
be very bold with your brush strokes do not be timid don't worry too much uh, even if you make a mistake don't go too many times over and over try to paint a la prima so right now I'm really building it in the three-dimensional space using my dark values As you can see we lost some of the edges which is perfectly okay we don't have to fill in the shapes that we already drew and I'm adding some more contrast because I need some darker cooler tones really in that horse in a way he's the negative shape behind the brown horse in the front so maybe if it's darker it will make the brown horse pop a little more And pay attention to the values some values are darker some are there's just degrees not everything is the same and again it's all about the edges some edges disappear and I wipe them or use clean water and I just run it run it next to the edge We really want to create mood and emotion in our paintings. This painting is titled Buddies because they're both looking in the same direction. I really like that repetitive um, look of both shapes and they almost look uh, different since one was a bit darker, the other one was brown they look almost like uh, opposite colors but all looking in the same direction so that was creating a nice uh, rhythm in the composition and again introducing warmer tones in the light areas emphasizing that edge It's going to bring our horse in the front more, bring it out more by painting the negative shape. And introducing some warm tones in in the shadow and again the final finishing touches could be just throwing paint some spatter some have a lot of fun with watercolor just adding some cooler tones towards in the edges at the bottom edge kind of framing it a little bit rounding the painting
bring out some shapes in the shadow. Again, softening some of the edges because this horse is behind, so I don't, I didn't want it to be really taking the main stage. And by softening the edges, we make it disappear. Kind of now you see it, now you don't. In a very sketchy way, adding some detail. And you can re-wet your paper and uh, add some wet on wet, spatter. Just have fun. Some more spatter. Spattering paint really adds a lot of expression and movement to your painting. Look at your edges, make sure that they're not all the same everywhere. That creates a nice impressionistic look and feel of your work. And nice atmosphere too, because there's a lot of air between objects. So that will really add more feeling to it. Watercolor does dry a bit lighter sometimes, so you can always go back and have some finishing touches, adding some more contrast. In those very dark areas, specifically, just to bring them out, like that ear. Just adding final finishing touches with the rigor brush. And remember, it's nice to have opposites, like rough shapes, refined shapes, thick brush strokes, thin brush strokes. It's all about creating interest in your work and big, small, hard, soft. So I always emphasize that. And again, some of these hairs will be in the light, so I use orange and red colors for those. And now just adding some more textures and details. These are the final and finer details towards the end. I hardly use white, but from time to time I do add a little bit of white for some highlights that I've lost. And generally you can use masking fluid ahead of time for areas where you know that you may lose, but I'm, I feel okay if you just minimally use titanium white in a kind of a dry brush technique and bring out a few highlights. So these are just the finishing touches towards the end and the painting is almost finished. It's important to know when to stop and not overwork your painting. Just adding I guess some more highlights of warmer towns to just have this horse pop a little bit more.
at this point you you're just being very intuitive because every single brush strokes could be placed strategically and can either make or break your painting but some finishing touches can really make the difference between a good painting and a great painting so sometimes you can be really really bold at this stage you can even take a big brush and just unify half of your painting that's what I do a lot of the time or add some really striking interesting accent color I had to add this uh, little reflection, warmer reflection in the belly of the horse just unifying some areas working on details then working on the big shapes and just going back and forth really everywhere in your painting keep the limited palette I see this brown in the horse in the front I wanted to sh to have it somewhere in the horse behind because that was going to connect them and have some more unity in the painting Squint your eyes, look at your reference, look at the big pictures, make sure your values are correct and squint your eyes in your own painting and see if you've accomplished what you really wanted to and that is usually creating nice emotional moody painting. Never forget to be bold and confident with your brush strokes, this is really important. just adding some more tones to this background it seemed a bit too light and just adding some more darker blues and purples yeah you can be really very expressive with your brush strokes don't be afraid there's no fear and remember with watercolor it will dry lighter you can always wipe it it's not the end of the world so really being brave with it gives a very nice expressive expressive feeling to your painting and I'm spattering and throwing paint around and at this point at this point it's just a very intuitive process really trying to create this rhythm and balance everywhere there's a lot of detail in the horses faces hopefully you can see it but there are these veins uh, right around their in the light or in the shadows too so these are usually achieved by just lifting paint some more spatter some more movement and it's getting very very close to complete more crazy hair everywhere 
it does give a feeling as if it's windy and wind that's that's how it was it was a windy day thank you for watching don't forget to follow me on instagram i'm art girl that's the name of my instagram i am art girl and don't forget to like and subscribe to this youtube youtube channel so you can be notified every time i upload a video and i do this quite often thank you and see you soon